Hello and welcome to another installment of the BehaviorAdvisor.com video series on Applied Behavior Analysis. I'm Tom McIntyre, Dr. Mac. In other parts of this website we became familiar with other ways of determining the reason, the purpose, the cause, the function behind a student's actions. Typically one that's repeated, a behavior pattern. In this segment we'll give the behaviorist answer to the eternal question, why does that kid keep doing that? <laughs> why? Essentially it boils down to this. It works. Humans show behaviors because there's a benefit to doing so, a payoff. Something desirable comes to us with that action, or we avoid something that we find undesirable, avoid or prevent it. Now our kids even though they're showing this aberrant non-social behavior, they're using the best strategies they've found so far for getting their needs met. We want to teach them more pro-social ways to meet their needs and their wants and their desires. To promote adoption of this new behavior, to promote replacement behaviors, we have to know what the need is, the drive, the function that this behavior serves. And then we have to assure that our replacements at least provide the same amount of reinforcement or else the youngster would say, well, what's the benefit of switching over? Why would I want to do this? Behaviors would recommend that we attempt to determine the function of a behavior by engaging in an ABC analysis, where the A stands for antecedent, the spark of the behavior, the prompt for the behavior. We can call it a stimulus if it's the final antecedent before the student's action. Ones that come before that we would refer to as setting events. But the antecedent sparks a behavior, and that behavior is maintained, is strengthened by the consequence that follows it. All right, here's your task. Grab someone else nearby to help you out if they're available. But we want you to activate your brain cells, get those synapses firing. Here are your quiz quiz. Let's see, a student gets two nights of detention for refusing teacher directions and even uttering some rude comments to that teacher. What's the antecedent in this situation? Hmm, the teacher gave a direction. The student's behavior refused that direction, uttered some rude comments. The consequence received two nights detention. Why would two nights detention be maintaining a behavior, strengthening a behavior? Well, this is just one incident. We're going to do a lot of ABC analyses to get a better picture of why the student does what he does. But is it an escape and avoidance? procedure a response on the part of the youngster is it is there some attention that is gained here is there some power that's gained in this situation we'll have to continue on with our a b c analysis oh there's a cultural faux pas here in this situation but let's take a look at it and i think that you know uh, in any situation like this the pokey is not pleased all right, got the ABC figured out? Right. The A, the student is getting prodded. What does she do? She moves away. That's the behavior. But well, what's the consequence? Ah, the dislike poke goes away, at least temporarily. Hey, an action that makes a negative thing go away? It feels good not to be punished. That's negative reinforcement. You can find out more about negative and positive reinforcement in another video in our ABA series. Oh, the youngster offered up an answer to a teacher's question, but I guess it was inadequate in the teacher's eyes, and she chastised Ricky. Now we find that Ricky doesn't contribute anymore in class. Hmm, what went on in this situation? What's the A? Oh, okay, the teacher's question. 
B. He offered an incorrect answer. C. He got chastised. His withholding of future contributions is motivated by which type of reinforcement, positive or negative? He must be getting reinforced for withholding commentary. Right. Negative reinforcement. Silence keeps the negative thing, the belittlement, away. Now if that seems unclear, again, see the video on this site regarding reinforcement, both the positive and the negative types. Oh, Lewis, again? Lewis sees the bully. He insults the hairstyle of the bully. Lewis again gets shoved around and threatened by the bully. And the adults say, Lewis, why do you do this to yourself? Well, let's try to figure out. what. Let's find out what's going on. The A was... Right, Lewis spotting the bully. His behavior? Yep. The insult. The consequence? Gets pushed and shoved around. Why is he doing this? Hmm, I'd like to add a D on to that ABC string and look at Dreiker's Mistaken Goals Analysis. You can find videos on this site regarding how to conduct Dreiker's Mistaken Goals Analysis to look deeper into a situation, to look into the mind of a youngster. Could it be that he's seeking belonging, our greatest human need? Is some attention better than no attention at all? Well, we'll have to conduct a number of other assessments besides the A, B, C analysis. Oh, I remember seeing a sign in the community pool when I was a kid. It said, no expectorating. I didn't know what it meant, and I kept hoping the lifeguard wouldn't see me doing it, whatever it was. But now I know that expectoration means spitting. And in this situation, the student spit, or is it spat, in the hallway, the corridor. You know, maybe for this youngster it's part of acting tough on the street corner where spitting happens a great deal. Maybe it generalized to the school situation. But what might have been an antecedent for spitting on the hallway floor? Devise an antecedent, possible antecedent, for this situation. What might have prompted the spitting action? Hmm. Perhaps associating with other spitters in conversation in the hallway corner. It kind of brings back that situation where you are on the, on the street corner and you engage in that behavior because you're conversing with others who engage in that behavior. Or did he run from the cafeteria to expel the burned broccoli? You imagine your own stimulus the most recent antecedent. You know, we're making it sound rather simple here, but events aren't so isolated as we make them sound in this video. We can often trace back the trail that led to the event that we're focusing on at the moment. For example, an antecedent happens. The student is prompted by something, the A, and exhibits a B, a behavior. You know, that behavior, if it's witnessed by the teacher, is an antecedent to the teacher to engage in a behavior. That teacher's behavior is a consequence for the student, and maybe not just a consequence, but it could be an antecedent, a spark, to display another behavior, which is an antecedent to the teacher. The teacher shows a behavior, which is a consequence for the student, and an antecedent for another action by the student. Okay. And we can trace back that chain to get a better picture of what's occurring in that situation. What letter comes before A? Let's take a look at this situation. The teacher says, it's time to join us in line to a young person. And that youngster screams refusals, throws things when asked again to line up, and roams about the room playing with things. Well, the teacher takes out the rest of the class to wherever they're headed, but the teacher assistant remains in the room until the crisis intervention teacher arrives thing is, the B follows A, this behavior of screaming and throwing things and roaming around the room, only happens 40% of the time when the youngster is asked 
to join us in line. Then is A truly an antecedent? What's going on if the behavior varies from day to day given the same stimulus? Let's take a look and try to figure that out. Let's, but we'll do it with another situation. All right. As Amy enters the classroom, the teacher directs her to begin the Do Now activity that's on the board. The bell work. Well, sometimes the student uh, shows B1 as a response to the antecedent of receiving that direction. And sometimes B2 surfaces when the command is given to engage in the bell work. What factors might be influencing the behavior that's displayed by that student on a particular day? Yes. How much sleep the youngster got the night before? The relationship with the teacher? Whether the youngster is feeling ill? Did the student do the homework assignment that's expected to be handed in today? Was he or she able to engage in that do now or bell work competently? Was it the way the direction was given? You'll want to check out the webinar on this site regarding how we phrase our utterances to enhance cooperation and compliance. Well, we've got our ABC analysis, but how do we use it to keep the problem behaviors from resurfacing? There's a couple of ways that we can do this. We can prevent the setting events or the antecedents from ever happening. If two youngsters agitate each other, we don't sit them near each other. If one pair of professionals seems to incite the refusal behavior of a particular student, then maybe we have another pair of professional approach that student. Prevention always trumps reaction, but sometimes reaction can help to prevent the behavior from happening in the future. Whatever that consequence is that is maintaining that behavior, we keep it from being delivered or we try to outweigh it with penalties if the youngster does show that behavior. Of course, we're going to try to get the youngster to display an acceptable replacement behavior by prompting it, especially behavior that would prevent the one we dislike from ever surfacing. G, differential reinforcement of incompatible behaviors. We've got a video on that here in our Applied Behavior Analysis series. A highly uh, effective, a very strong procedure for changing behavior for the better. But we know the youngsters are trying to meet their needs well, what are some student needs and desires? Yes, the youngster might need some movement. Might be trying to change the climate of the room by getting out of the sun or closer to the fan. Perhaps the youngster engaged in that behavior in an attempt to gain some food or some water. Safety and avoiding pain is oftentimes a motivation. Whether it's physical pain, psychological pain from being belittled by someone, or intellectual pain. Other kids saying, oh, that was a dumb answer, or what a dummy. Right. It may be that this person was trying to get some positive recognition and acceptance by valued persons, that greatest of human needs to belong to others, to be accepted by them, to be valued by them. And many of our behaviors are motivated by our attempts to connect with others. Or perhaps this youngster was trying to master a subject or a skill, or trying to reach a higher level of achievement. Ah yes, if you're dealing with kids who have special needs in the area of behavior, we have ourselves an alphabet soup. So many tests and measures have acronyms like FBA, conducting a functional behavior assessment. We try to determine what is the function, the drive, the reason behind that youngster's behavior. And the ABA folks would recommend the ABC analysis. 
But we've got to understand that the ABC analysis looks at surface behavior, only what we can witness. It doesn't look behind the curtain at things like the preferred ways of taking in information or showing one's knowledge and skills. It doesn't address the cultural differences in right ways to behave in particular situations. It doesn't look at the value systems that oftentimes vary among peoples. Can't look at the emotional drives. It doesn't look inside the kids' noggins. You'll be able to do that by looking at assessment procedures found elsewhere on our BehaviorAdvisor.com site. Thank you for joining me for another video in our series on Applied Behavior Analysis. This is Dr. Mack, signing off.